Hello everybody, welcome to our next video in the series um, on using um, on trust solutions. So in this video we're going to learn about using the method of virtual world to solve for redundant trust structures. So we'll basically figure out how we can calculate the internal forces uh, and then effectively figure out the overall trust values here. So if we start, we have to figure out what a redundant truss is to begin with. Uh, so we kind of like quickly recall. So imagine I have a triangular truss structure over here. Uh, this isn't too difficult to solve. Uh, imagine I add two more links over here. This guy isn't too difficult to solve either. Now imagine I have one more link at this point. Now things get a little bit dicey. So if you remember, um, if I have different number of links, uh, each of those I can actually create two degrees of equation. So I have four joints over here, each of that. So if J is the number of joints, uh, I'm going to basically have two J equations in 2D. And then if I denote the number of links by M, this is basically links, which is the number of unknowns. So this is going to be one constraint over here. So we basically have one constraint over here uh, because I'm preventing the movement in the uh, X direction here. So I'm basically not allowing this to link to move in this direction. And then this is going to be two constraint. So we can think of the constraints and the number of links to be unknown. So the member is going to be six uh, and then constraint is going to be three. So I'll notice two times J. So this gives me eight. Uh, four links times two so this gives me eight equations for equilibrium I can solve uh, and then I have nine unknowns over here so what that basically means is I'm short of one equation over here so if you think about this differently uh, so imagine I remove this link which is one of the diagonal links uh, I have this structure over here so if I apply this hundred newton force uh, I'm going to have the links in red so this guy here is going to be so this is going to be intention. So this is going to be intention over here. And then these two links over here are in compression here, right? That's how we'll actually solve this. So if I do that, I'm going to have some amount of deformation over here. So this link here is going to become shorter while this diagonal link actually becomes longer over here. So this diagonal link here would actually become longer. So that my final structure kind of looks like this. Uh, and then now what I'm going to do is figure out a way to insert this missing gray link over here, right? So if I basically figure out, uh, if I can in in kind of like include this link, uh, I can somehow put this back in the picture. Then I can kind of like the hook or the crook, I can get back the original structure I'm trying to solve. So how would I do that? So we wanted to basically kind of like put this link over here. So I'd actually need to make this link here shorter right so this link needs to be shorter over here and then when i do that i need to apply some amount of force to make it shorter and then i need to apply kind of like an equal and opposite force at this location and so that when i pull all of these links they kind of get aligned together so what that means is that this guy and this guy are going to be in tension and then this link over here this becomes uh, goes into compression over here. So these are going, this is going to be our learning outcome for the video over here. So we're going to look at um, recalling concepts of virtual work and then we can recall the truss displacement using method of virtual work. We'll apply method of joints to solve for the internal deflection and then calculate the virtual work and determine the real displacement. And then we'll solve the redundant truss using the method of virtual work. And then finally, we'll calculate the displacement in the truss structure. So we're going to actually consider a slightly more interesting truss structure over here uh, before we actually solve this. So this is the truss structure I'm going to be looking at. Uh, so before we can actually solve this, we have to look at what actually happens when you're doing the calculation. So imagine I have two links over here. So this is similar to uh, two truss examples you can have. And then what we're gonna do is figure out how we can remove the link B 
uh, and then calculate the overall displacement. So if you recall, this is actually going to be a redundant structure over here, this link over here. So we kind of know that FA plus FB would be equal to 100. But then because it's a redundant structure, we don't have a way of directly getting the value of FA and FB without actually imposing the constraint that the displacement of A would be equal to displacement of B here. So let's think about how we can actually do. So what we can do is think about actually pulling the link B outside. And then what we do is we apply a force uh, TB over here and then the same value of TB over here. So what happens is if I basically take this link and then drop it in place here, the TB forces um, that are highlighted, they kind of cancel out and because they equal and opposite and the link goes back in place and everything is nice and done. So now we have to figure out the displacement at this location A. So, so the link A here gets a little bit longer, but then this is the combined effort of this 100 Newton as well as this force TB. <coughs> that is what is going to cause this link to get a little bit longer. And this delta B is determined entirely by the value of TB. So when you're actually solving for this displacement T A at B, we need to include the effect of both the TB and the 100 newtons. So we're going to solve for TB such that the total displacement delta T A sub uh, A at B is equal to delta B, considering that A is displacement of both of 100 newtons and TB while B is only displacement due to B. So in this case, we can calculate what this is going to be. Delta A at B is going to be 100 minus TB times L divided by A, cross section area of A, E, and then similarly, we can calculate Delta B, and then put this, putting this all together, we'll find that TB is 20 Newtons, and then TA is going to be the balance 80 Newtons. So we're going to recall the principle of virtual work. So when we apply a virtual force to a structure in equilibrium, the virtual force, uh, external force, produces internal virtual force for equilibrium. The virtual force is assumed not to produce any additional deflection or deformation. The external and the internal virtual work are imagined to be present at the very beginning of time so that we say that the internal real deformation times the internal virtual force would be the internal virtual work. What we then do is if you have multiple links, we sum over all the links to get the total internal virtual work. We are going to equate it to the external virtual work, which is given by the uh, external real deformation times the external virtual work, uh, since the equilibrium structure is an equilibrium. So we're going to basically equate these two terms. So we're going to basically equate these two terms and the only unknown here, so this basically we can calculate, um, this is calculable. Um, the external virtual work is kind of decided by you and the only unknown here is going to be this external deformation so kind of like equating these two we can find the unknown external deformation so how would we do this in practice so what we actually do is we kind of look at the structure itself and then we assume you're going to have real external force which produces unknown external displacement and internal deformation the internal deformation is given by delta i is T e sub i l i divided by a i e i. So T e. So this can actually be calculated using either the method of joints or method of sections. And so once we have this. Uh, L i is given to you by the structure, A and uh, A which is the cross section area and E is the Young's modulus will be given to you. So you can actually calculate the internal deformation of each of those uh, links making up the truss structure. Now what we do is we actually apply a virtual force in the direction we want to determine the deformation. So we typically apply a 1 Newton force and the external virtual force produces internal virtual forces T sub Vi for equilibrium. The virtual force is assumed not to produce any additional deformation anywhere in the structure. Now what we do is multiply the virtual force, internal virtual force with the real internal deformation. So this would give you the total internal virtual work. So if you sum all of these values, so if you basically sum these values over here, it will give you the total internal virtual work and then equating that to the external virtual work and then dividing by the one Newton value, 
we would actually get the um, the actual displacement along the uh, virtual force that we applied. So we're going to look to see how we can adapt that to our redundant trust structure. So here, what we do is we get rid of one of the links. So we're going to basically get rid of one of the links. So imagine I get rid of the link one four, pull it out. So what we've basically done is converted the um, trust structure to a determined trust structure with an unknown force in the place of the redundant link as shown. So now if you can solve for the unknown force to match the deflection such that delta A at 1, 4 is equal to delta B at 1, 4, uh, where A is this structure to the left and then B is the single link structure. And if you do that, we kind of like repeat uh, what we did before and the trust structure is solved. So if you recall with our link previously, so what we actually did was we basically solved equating the delta um, of the structure uh, where the link B was removed and then we equate the displacement between these two and then if we equate that and given that the force that we apply is the same then we can basically just drop this guy in place and then the whole structure would work, work the way we are supposed to. So since we are basically trying to equate the displacement uh, between 1, 4 over here uh, to the displacement of B uh, what we need to do is actually calculate the displacement between the joints 1 and 4. So previously if you wanted to calculate the displacement at joint 3, so you'd apply a virtual force in that direction. And uh, Since we want to apply a virtual force here, what we do is, um, since we want to calculate the displacement between 1 and 4, what we do is we actually apply a 1 Newton force between 1 and 4. So now what we do is we kind of take a look at the structure a little bit closely. So now we have this unknown force P and then a 1 Newton force here. So we're like, you know what, instead of calculating this P and this one uh, unknown force, one, uh, one, excuse me, one Newton virtual force, what we do is we kind of like think about replacing the P as some constant P times a one Newton force, right? I can always do this. And then I'm like, you know what, I have this one Newton force uh, P, which is pointing from one towards four and from four towards one. And then I have this virtual one Newton force shown in blue, which is pointing in the opposite direction. And then I'm equating these displacement. What I would rather do is I can actually flip these one of the forces. So what I can do is I can actually think about flipping the virtual force and then as well as calculating the inverse of the displacement. So what that will mean is I'm going to equate minus delta one four, um, so at A, to delta B at 1, 4. Or what I can say is like the sum of delta A sub, uh, delta sub A 1, 4 plus delta sub B 1, 4 equal to 0. So this will allow me to kind of like have the force in the same direction. Again, this is just a quick trick, math trickery, which will allow us to make life a little bit simpler. So once we have that, we say, you know what? I can kind of like merge the two 1 Newton forces together. So what I do is I can think about merging the one Newton force together. Uh, if I do that, if TE is the internal force due to the external force, T1N sub uh, I is the internal force due to the one Newton force along one four. So this is going to represent both the virtual plus the T14 divided by P value. So both of these are going to be just the one Newton force and rather than calling it a virtual force, because I'm going to be using it for other calculation, I'm just going to replace it as T sub one in I. So that means my total force in any of the links, T sub total I is going to be T E sub I plus P times T one N sub I. So this is because everything is linear. So if I had applied uh, one Newton force, if I apply instead of one, the force between one, four, instead of it being one Newton was 10 Newton, all the internal forces become proportionally larger. That basically means I can substitute and then say Delta uh, would be the actual displacement in any of the links would be the P total um, divided uh, times L divided by AE, which basically becomes PE plus P times P sub one Newton I times L divided by AE. And then uh, you can calculate the Delta one four uh, at A is given by this formula over here. 
and then since my t1 n sub i is 1 newton I, and then when I do this sum over here, delta sub A14 plus delta B sub A14, uh, my summation actually becomes all of the links. So I basically no longer have to exclude the link 1,4. And then this is the equation that I basically have. So since I'm basically saying that this, since I'm basically saying that this is equal to zero, that basically means that this term should be equal to zero as well. So if you look at this term, so you basically have the only unknown term here is going to be P is unknown. The rest of it, we can actually calculate or we actually know. So this term is here, this is given, and then T and this T can actually be calculated using the method of joints. So if you define W sub T E T one N, using this equation over here, uh, T W sub T 1 N 1 N using this equation over here. So then uh, setting T sub E 1 4 equal to 0, T sub 1 N 4 equal to 1, we can basically write this equation here. And then I can get the value of P, which is going to give me the force in the uh, one four link. Let's see how we do that. Um, so this is going to be a, a good stage for you to calculate all the values. So for vertical equilibrium, we find that F sub one Y equal to 10 Newtons, uh, taking moment up to get J1, uh, about, um, we get moment about J1, we get F sub 5x would be equal to minus 20 newtons. And then from horizontal equilibrium, F1x is 20 newtons. So once you do that, we can use the method of joints uh, for equilibrium mode J1. We find that T12 is minus 20 and T15 is minus 10. Equilibrium mode J3, T34 is 10 row 2, T23 is minus 10. Equilibrium of J2, so we find T24 is minus 10 and T25 is 10 root 2 newtons. So similarly, I can also calculate equilibrium board J4 and then we find T45 is 10 newtons. So once we have all of this, uh, we're going to apply a virtual force uh, between 1 and 4. So if I kind of like try to find the force anywhere outside of the circle or the block, um, circle block, we notice the force is actually going to be zero. So the way to do it is I can basically think about doing a um, section here as shown. This link is going to look like this. And then because there is no external force, this force would be zero, this force would be zero as well. So the same principle is going to apply anywhere else in the structure. That basically means that if you don't have a block that is kind of like adjoining the one unit force, all the forces that you cal calculate are going to be zero. So from equilibrium of J1, uh, we can calculate T12 is minus one over root two, T15 is minus one over root two. From equilibrium of J4, we find T25 is minus one over root two, and T45 is minus one over root two as well. So from equilibrium of J2, we find T25 is one newton. So once you have that, we're going to put all of those values into our table over here. Um, and once we have that, we can calculate the work. And from this, we calculate P is minus 8.54 newtons, 54 newtons. Once we have that, we can actually calculate the total uh, force. Basically, we're going to basically take 20 plus P times this value would give this value over here. So we kind of fill those up, and then that is going to be the total force in the link with the actual redundant trust structure. So we can actually calculate the displacement along the external force. Uh, potentially we can apply an additional virtual force along the external force, uh, and then calculate, do all the calculation. But life would be easier if you actually imagine applying a virtual force equal to the PE or the hundred uh, the the external force that I initially apply. So if I do that, I can actually nicely write this equation given below. 
my delta along PE is going to be 1 over PE times sum of T total I squared Li divided by AI EI. So I'm going to use that in my table. So assuming the link area is 1 centimeter squared and Young's modulus is 200 gigapascal, we can fill in T squared L divided by AI EI. And then substituting the value, we find delta 3 along the external forces, 0 0.507 micrometer. So conclusion, so we examine why redundant trust structure requires us to consider deformation and then we used uh, virtual work to solve a redundant trust structure and then demonstrated how the displacement of the trust, redundant trust structure can be calculated. So this basically concludes our video. Thank you.